This is Old Market Square in the heart of Nottingham. Behind me, the council house. In that building, the city councillors gave an initial thrust to four years of marvellous British skating. They awarded a grant to Jane Torval and Christopher Dean from the 1st of October 1980 until the Winter Olympics of 1984. Everyone had high expectations, but no one expected such a quick return. Just four months later, they were European champions. Five months later, they were world champions, and they've kept winning and winning until now. They're the greatest ice dancers of all time and the most famous skaters in the world. We've never had so many letters from viewers, each asking to see their favorite performance again. So let's start with that first world title at Hartford, Connecticut in 1981. change in the tempo of the music. They are skating with remarkable assurance. They seem to have grown in confidence since that European victory.
That's it, four minutes of very fine free dancing. Great applause from 14 and a half thousand people. And a few Brits waving their flags. The Union Jacks are fluttering around in this stadium. That was the free program that will set the standard for the medals in this 1981 World Championship. How precise their steps are. Remember that the judges in ice dancing are looking at the skates. Perfect. The first set of marks for technical merit. They're a very, very good. One, two, three, four, five point nine. And the rest of them are 5.8. Well, that's a pretty high standard for anyone to beat. And the mark for artistic impression, one, two, three, four, five, five point nines and four, five point eights. And Betty Calloway, who trained the last year's world champions, Rogozzi and Salai of Hungary, must be very, very pleased with that. And skated, of course, in the customary style of the day. The varying tempos and varying pieces of music. They skated to music from the feature film of Faye, The Caravan. You probably recognize Red Cells in the Sunset, and there was Swing, Swing, Swing. But in 1982, things were to be different. Jane and Chris, who were training here at Nottingham Ice Stadium and at Oberstdorf in West Germany, decided to skate to the music from one show. They portrayed the love story of Mac and Mabel from the musical by Jerry Herman.
an absolutely faultless performance. And the flowers now and the people chanting and stamping their feet in the stadium at the Bromby Hallen here in Copenhagen. Standing ovations from their teammates. The feet, quick, fast, secure. Watch the runs here from Jane. Absolutely solid. And they are 5.9s right across the board. Because they have skated first, it would be very difficult for any judge to give a maximum six when there are another four pairs to go after them. But that, <laughs> 5.9s. And look at this. There are some sixes. One, two, three, four, five sixes. Well, those Union Jacks have every right to be waived because I am sure that nobody is going to beat those marks. And the crowd here are extremely proud of the fact that they will be going on to the top of the rostrum as world champions for the second year in a row. A great, great night for Britain. It most certainly was. And even Robin Hood was in danger of being eclipsed as Nottingham's most famous folk hero. Jane and Chris were always creative, always wanted to do something different. A visit to the State Circus in Moscow, followed by watching Barnum in London's West End, gave them the theme and the music for their 1983 free dance program. Here they are at the Worlds in Helsinki, skating to their incredibly popular Barnum on Ice.
standing up all around the building to applaud that performance by Jane Corbell and Christopher Dean. Everywhere, people are standing. The flowers are raining onto the ice. This is quite, quite remarkable. They seem to have set a new dimension in ice dancing. They have caught the imagination of the crowd. Now we have to wait and see whether they have still the imagination of the judges who, remember thus far, have marked them higher than any other ice dancers. That is one of the most remarkable receptions I have ever heard. And every judge has given 5.9 for the first set of marks. A technical merit has 5.9 right across the board. This is not only setting the standard, but I am sure going to win this world championship for Jane and Chris. Michael Crawford on the left to help them with the program. And just look at that. Nine, six marks. Every one of them a six. We don't really have to wait. We know. Dean Torbell and Christopher Dean are the World Ice Dance Champions of 1983. What a performance. So the Finns really loved it. So did the judges. Their complete row of sixes, another first for Torval and Dean. A far cry from the days when police cadet Dean patrolled the beat here in central Nottingham. So we had the customary style in 1981. We had the love story in 1982. We had the circus in 1983. Three years in which they completely changed the face of ice dancing. Come 1984, and once again, Torval and Dean did something completely different. They took one piece of music to one tempo and skated their free dance to that tempo. Four minutes of high drama and artistic brilliance that won them the highest set of marks ever recorded in international competition. A perfect climax to a remarkable amateur career.
one side. You only have to look, you only have to listen, and you know that you have seen the best in the world. That audience is absolutely marvellous. So too were Jane Corbell and Christopher Dean. In front of me, the television commentators of Canada are standing and applauding. You can see them in the photograph there. Betty Calloway stands, watches, and waits. But the flowers are coming onto the ice from every direction. The applause doesn't diminish. The Union Jacks are waving. And that, remember, was the last amateur competitive performance of the greatest ice dancers the world has known. Now, the march. Remember, there's already got 17 sixes in this championship. There's one, two, three, four sixes there. Now, if they were to get nine sixes in the second set of marks, that would be a new record. Everyone is keeping their fingers crossed. They have scored 12 sixes. Yes, it's happened. Nine sixes. Four in the first set, that is 13 sixes, the most sixes ever scored by any skaters in competition. What a way to go out on top of the world. Jane Torville and Christopher Dean received their gold medals from the chairman of the technical committee of the International Skating Union, Elmer Tertap. It's the fourth year in a row the British champions have stood on top of the rostrum. And in this year, 1984, it's their last. They finished their amateur careers in a style befitting the world's greatest ice skaters. In the years ahead, I'm sure they'll continue to enthrall audiences all over the world. And as they turn to await the national anthem and the raising of the flags, we remember what they have done for British ice skating over the past four years. One can only say thank you, Jane Torvald and Christopher Dean. On BBC Two now, the Death and Glory Boys face arrest by PC Tedder in the last part of Swallows and Amazons Forever. Here on BBC One, it's Death and Glory Boy John Wayne, who gives an arresting performance as Colonel Cord McNally in our Wednesday film, Rio Lobo.
Come on, Corporal. Pick up your feet. This here box is pretty heavy, Lieutenant. Gold usually is. Come on, get a move on. Get a hold of it in there. Now you get in there with 